All right. You ever seen the movie The Grinch? I think that's where this phrase comes in. And it's fitting for today. It's many years ago, about 15 or 20, this mercy ship, as its title was, its name, came to the Coos Bay Bay, and people could go and visit, see what it was like, and see what it was about. And so some Christians uh, got doctors together, some money, bought this ship, and took it to Africa. And man, they just line up the people and bring them on and treat them for free, you know. And it's fantastic. And now they have a fleet, uh, quite a few ships. And uh, this girl, and I encourage you to get online and just type in on Facebook, Mercy Ship. And there'll be a number of articles. And <clears throat> what's the greatest thing ever is the before and after pictures. So this eight-year-old girl, uh, Hussein Atu is her name, Hussein Atu. Uh, she has this tumor there, and, uh, and the little write-up says, She was just a toddler when the tumor began to grow in her mouth. Her family feared for her future and the ridicule she would face, <coughs> and made the difficult decision to keep her home from school while they searched for help. For Hussein to a future without surgery meant a life hidden away from the world. But then she found hope when Hussein to and her father arrived <coughs> excuse me, on the gangway of Africa Mercy, that ship's name. Her father called himself the happiest man in the world. Now the girl, the young girl's future has changed forever. And it's just this picture of um, just the before and after, and, and all of us can imagine the hope filled with their whole family and everyone who knew her. <coughs> Excuse me. There's been an unmistakable change in her life. <coughs> So, related to this, is that we thrill to two things. The why and the how, the understanding of truth and what to do with it, the principles or the word of God, and then what he calls us to. <coughs> Amazing. I haven't coughed at all. <laughs> and having this cold <laughs> until now. So these two things, thing one and thing two, are seen in the Word of God. So the number one principle or the Word is what God did to save all who would believe. So there's just things to understand about God, right? That's thing one. So thing two, then, <clears throat> are the actions or the effects of what happened when we were saved. <coughs> so he comes, he cleanses from sin. This is all in thing one now. He comes, he cleanses from sin, gives us a new heart, something we didn't have before. And he will make his home with us. <coughs> and so, so this verse, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. And so, this is all thing one. So, so, whatever he, the Lord Jesus, says, and then it's how did he say to do something? What did he tell us? So, with this picture of 
Husayna tube here. See, it, this is a picture of sight. <coughs> but unmistakably, see, when we lay over faith over the top of this picture, it gives us, you know, we can do this. We can see the before God enters our life, before he comes, before he cleanses us from sin, now before he gives us a new heart, before he makes his home with us, there's big trouble. And if you go to the website, th this is mild compared to, the, I, I saw two other tumors, on uh, one on a child, on a bigger boy, maybe her size, but it was big, it was much bigger. And then one, a grown man that had this grapefruit right here. And then they, they're able to take care of it. You know, over here, if our kids have a little tumor, what do we do? We just take it, go down to the dentist or the doctor. We get it taken care of. Some things are easier. We have the technology. We can rebuild him, right? <laughs> Sorry. Steve Austin and all that. But um, in Africa, they don't have the technology yet. When we were there, I, I had this huge uh, infection on my ankle, on my shin, and before the skin broke, I, I went to see a local doctor there. Some fellow meant well, and he, he cleaned off my leg on the outside, and it did nothing, you know. It was zero, and there was many things like that that we found that they just didn't have the technology is all. They're smart. But uh, they didn't know. So this thing one is great because there's the truth that we, of course, can find out and come to know. And then when we see a picture like this, then we can, you know, see together the thing one and the thing two and say, right, and the light bulb, you know, just burns brighter in us about the truth and, and what we are called to. <coughs> we have found that we're on the gangway of the right ship, you might say. And it's true for us, because if you're a real Christian, you know the truth. You know, like, Pilgrim's Progress, for example, is the story, this kind of a story where a pilgrim, the fellow's name was Christian, <coughs> he had a pack on his back, this huge weight of sin strapped to him that he had to lug around everywhere, and it was terrible for him. But it was just normal life. That's all he had. Until he came Well, until he came to Jesus. And then the weight was, it, it fell from his back, and he was free. And so we Christians, someone adds it up like that, and we say, yes, how right that is, how good that is. And we see a picture like this. And we say, yes, this is a picture for us, that this has happened to us. <coughs> So, we just read through Romans. Today's the last chapter. And my sermon's going to be short today. <clears throat> I planned it that way, thinking, well, I could probably get through. <laughs> I was foolish. Randy should be up here right now. <clears throat> I mean, just pure and simple. Sorry about that. But there's this great juncture in Romans. It's all this thing one for the first 11 chapters. <clears throat> and then begins chapter 12 with the transition, the juncture. So we have thing one and the important, important things. Uh, Jim, did you know all those important things in the first 11 chapters before you were saved? 
and for the first long while after you were saved, do we necessarily know all these things? We don't. <clears throat> but we get to drop back and pick them up and learn about how great it is, what we really were like, what, what a tumor, you know? And now we're free, right? It's great news. And so then there's the juncture that comes that transfers us to thing two. So Paul launches in and says the words, therefore, and if you haven't memorized these two verses, uh, they're good ones to do. Just a heads up. <coughs> therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So, it's self-explanatory, but let me just say, offer your body, your whole self, all of your personality, who you are, every strength and ability you have, we surrender, submit to Him. Uh, this is God is calling us to this, and he's trying to help us to do this. Because it's the most help we can receive, if we will do it. Then he goes on, <clears throat> do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. You know, we've lived all of our life after this pattern, and he says, don't do it any longer, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Jim, or any of the rest of us, isn't this exactly what's happened since we were saved, since we were born again? We have been transforming this thing. We have been learning about God and finding out how much He loves us. His arms are open. He's calling us forward even today. This renewing of our mind, and we believe it. The more we renew it, the more we believe it, and we rejoice. And we turn to Him willingly <coughs> more often and realize, leave some more baggage behind. You know, that this, this study in Genesis, how good it's going to be. You know, there's about 20 of us that come and take it in and receive the, the blessing of the truth. And we leave some more baggage behind. It's just good. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good, pleasing, and perfect. Well, we can know the will of God. And if that doesn't beckon us forward, I don't know what will. We can know the will of God. We, we submit to Him in verse 1, offer ourselves before Him fully as we can, and He, he uh, loves it. He pours into us the goodness and the truth and Let's us know his will, how to turn right or to the turn left, this week. And so, all of this gets us to chapter 13 that we were in the other day. Just the last the section at the end of the chapter, if you'd like to turn there in Romans 13. So this is, again... Uh, thing too, right? Of what we can do. I love, um, I preached on Romans 12, the rest of that chapter. Oh, it's just filled with things to do and, and such good things that just are so relieving, like, like, uh, how does it say it about revenge? Don't get revenge ever. And he's trying to help us with this, right? Because we'll hold a grudge and we'll remember. Or whatever, you know, things stir in us. And he's trying to help us. And he gives us such strong, clear, good encouragement that, that helps us. <coughs> so it is. <coughs> so it is here in this uh, 8, 9, and 10 say this. Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. So, this love that he shows us, 
course, is a different kind of love. It says that they'll know we are Christians by this kind of love if we will do this kind of love. It's not, it's not that we help deserving folks, you know. We just help folks. People who are down and out and people that need help. And we don't have a, you know, a bar, a standard before we'll help and all that because God had none with us. It says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Died for us when we were, you know, not worthy. <laughs> and so it is. He calls us to have the same love. Sacrifice for others. Give. And it will be given to you. And so, verse 9, 4, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in the words, in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's powerful. As it says in Tim, you know, I didn't add that verse. I found that it was missing. Oh, I pressed, I thought I didn't press save. You got to press save. Yeah. So, verse 10, if you have your Bibles open, it says, Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So this love takes over in the New Testament. And obviously, we don't commit adultery. We don't. We don't. Um, we don't watch pornography. We, you know, he helps us overcome. Now that he's come in, we have the power to turn away when before we didn't over these all these things. Murder, Jesus said, if you you know are angry with someone in your heart, it's like murder. Um, stealing, coveting, you know, coveting. Who can figure that one out? Nobody knows you're coveting. Uh, well, we keep it a secret if, we're, if, if we know, well, I shouldn't, you know, it's keeping up with the Joneses. But who do we say, well, I was coveting this week? Until, <laughs> until we learn that he says, well, don't covet. Oh, well, he's listening to our thoughts, you know. And only he can do that. And when we realize this, our light bulb says, okay. I, he's calling me forward on this. It, so we do. We come forward. <clears throat> so then, we'll finish with these last four verses. Somewhere it says, besides this. <clears throat> Well, wait, it is up there. <laughs> you guys, you should help me. With it. <laughs> We're sleepy. <laughs> I usually don't make you sleepy. <clears throat> so, all right, it was there. I did do it. So, verse eleven. Then, besides, is it? Is that there? Maybe it was that one that was missing. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Verse 11 says, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Now, Paul wrote this 1900 years ago, right? And a half. Uh, I mean, 1950, you know, a long time ago. He wrote this, and he believed it, because it was true. We do not know the day or the time when Christ returns. And so he's yet calling us to be ready. And with all that's going on, indeed, this verse is more true now than ever. The hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. And so, when we, if we were to wake from sleep, which is our calling to continue to believe more fully, and we do, 
I, I think the closer we get to him, the more we pull it to the front burner and, boy, we, we keep coming and, and we believe this. And it's like waking from sleep. It says the night is far gone. Is that on the slide? So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So this here is a spiritual battle. And with Christ who has come to us. You know, here's the darkness and light imagery. It is indeed a battle, the work he calls us to. And only can be done with his help. So now that he has come to us, and we should go out of here believing that he is in us. You know, we sit a little straighter. We believe it a little stronger. We know it's the truth. He is for us, not against us. He is with me, not, not with me. And so, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness. Okay, that looks like something. I used to not do this, but I think he's calling me to do this. I used to do that, but I think he's calling me not to do that. And even if we've struggled before, you know, why do we struggle? Because we've done it all our life. And yet he's calling us forward today because of the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So he's saying today, believe it today. And just see what might happen. He will be with us if you believe that he is with you and he is saying this to us. His word, thing one, he is speaking and thing two is us responding. Amen. And so, this spiritual battle, of course, can happen. But you and I have to take it up. We have to hear him and say that he's talking to me. Now, do you hear that? This message is not for me. <laughs> it is for me, and it's not, I'm not just speaking to myself. And so, in 13, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Wow. Powerful words if we hear them today. If we hear them for ourselves. If you hear them, if he is speaking to you, your Lord and Savior, he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. If there was ever a New Testament phrase, this is it. It's the imagery of the put on and put off. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and put off. Here, make no provision for the flesh. You know, we carry around this flesh of ours and it has its desires. It has its lusts. It has, and he says, make no provision for it. He acknowledges it. Because with the Lord Jesus Christ, if we put him on, oh, it's a new day. He would have us renew that relationship today. Thing one, understanding him and his word. And thing two, with his help, <clears throat> taking whatever steps he is bringing to your mind. With his help. It is not going to happen without his help. And so when you say, yes, I hear your voice, my Lord and Savior. You know, what's her name? Who's saying it to? You know, she knows that this doctor, you no know, doctors like this in Africa. Africa is like three times bigger than the continental United States. It's huge. And there's no doctors fixing all these people. And yet, 
Wow, what a breath of life into their whole family and anyone who knew her or any of the rest of them they fix. I mean, they, the, the pictures, you see somebody's leg go down and then they, at their knee it juts out the wrong way and it's fixed solid because they broke it and couldn't fix it. There's a, there's a boy got all burned and his arm healed like this and there was this kind of skin that, you know, he couldn't move his arm out anymore fixed him. I mean, they fix all these. You should see. It's inspiring. And spiritually, it's, it's the same for us. When we lay down our lives and take up what he has called us to, and it frees us even further, even uh, yet again, today, it's great news. Hearing his word, thing one, and thing two. He calls us forward. What is your Lord and Savior calling you to today? He just is saying, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for encouraging us, for opening your arms, for helping us hear you. Thank you for the imagery of the other people doing good things that really helps folks. And we can really help, folks. Thank you for hearing, uh, just that we can hear your voice and that you know, you're watching, you're with us, you're beckoning us forward to keep coming. Thank you for helping us put it together. You're at the center, and we, but we got to make you at the center. we got to allow you to be in the center. Thank you for your help. Your help will come to us today for us, if we will. If we will. Thank you for all of us you will be helping. You are helping, but it's so hard sometimes to let the guard down and to risk stepping out. And yet, you beckon us to keep coming. Thank you for that. Thank you for being good. Thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I did it!